Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the first steps that we'll be taking in designing our property plan for our new 57 acres. And there is a whole lot that goes into fully designing a property to maximize its efficiency for both holding and hunting whitetails. But in today's video, I want to focus on the first steps that I like to take when designing a habitat plan or a whitetail property layout. And just like with the rest of our videos, we're going to be talking about how you can apply this information to your property, as well as how we're going to be applying it to our 57 acres. So we just bought a new property. Where do we want to start when designing a new whitetail property plan or, or property layout? And it really doesn't have to be much more complicated than figuring out what a deer needs to call that area home. And in order for a deer to really want to call an area home, that area needs to offer a few things to the deer. That area needs to offer food, cover, water, and a feeling of security. But when we're talking about a feeling of security, that deer needs to feel safe in that area in order to call that area home. So yes, cover relates to feeling of security, but when it comes to feeling of security, it really boils down to hunting pressure. Are you applying too much pressure to that property? So when you're designing your property layout, and it's no different for us, you wanna make sure that you're giving the deer everything that they need to call that property home. So you wanna make sure that you're giving the deer everything that they need on your property so that they don't have to leave. Now, are they going to leave? Yes, deer are going to move around, especially those bucks during the rut. They are going to leave your property, but you wanna make sure that they spend more time on your property than the neighboring property. So, that, so again, you need to make sure that you're giving them everything that they need on your property. Food, cover, water, and very important, a sense of security. Another aspect to designing your habitat plan that's extremely important as it relates to addressing those needs that a whitetail has is that each one of those needs is going to be different on each individual property, depending on the area. What I mean by that is in some areas, cover is going to be more important than food. That's not to say that food is not important, it's just that in one particular area, cover might be more important. On the flip side, there might be other areas where food is more important than cover. Again, it's not to say that cover is not important, it's just that in that particular area, food might be more important. So on your property, how do you go about figuring out what's more important? Where should you place the emphasis? On creating food or creating cover? And, and notice I kind of left out water and a feeling of security because if you have water, that is great. If you don't, we can always implement that down the road and a feeling of security, that's going to be the same on every property. You wanna keep your pressure as low as possible. You wanna make sure you have secure access on every property, no matter what. So th those two, th they're extremely important, but for, for the most part in this video, we wanna focus on those first two, food and cover. And in order to figure out the primary focus of your property, or to figure out which improvement is going to increase the effectiveness of your property, you don't need to go much further than Google Maps. To figure out what your property needs to attract and hold the attention of the local deer herd, you really just need to go to a satellite image and analyze the local habitat. So for me, and again, this property is no different, I like to use Google Earth, find my property, and then I zoom out to view you know, the square mile, square two miles, square three miles surrounding my property. And I really try to focus on you know, what is the area providing the deer from that, from that needs list that we talked about earlier, you know, food, cover, water, you know, feeling of security. We hunt in Michigan, we can assume that there's a, a bunch of hunters surrounding our property. So, you know, that one's gonna be taken care of with our hunting tactics. But from a food and a cover perspective, you know, what is the property offering the deer or, or what is the area offering the deer and, and what is the area not offering the deer? And there's gonna be a few different scenarios depending on where your property is located. Our previous property that we just sold was located in an area with very little cover. So the, the area had a whole lot of food. There was a lot of ag fields surrounding our property. So that would be an area that would be considered heavy ag. And in this scenario, there's a lot of food in the area, not a whole lot of cover. So the deer in the area are lacking cover. So on our property, one of the primary focuses was adding cover. 
we wanted to add as much cover as we could to that property. Now again, that does not mean that we are neglecting food. We, we still made sure we had you know, great food plots on the property, but our primary focus over the three years that we were there was to add very secure cover. You know, on the flip side of that, you're going to run into areas where you know, there, there is no food in sight. You can, you can zoom out as far as you want and you're not gonna see an ag field for miles. And actually that's the scenario on this new property. You can go you know, a mile in, in every direction and you're not gonna find an ag field. I think the closest ag field is a mile and a half to the west and there's another one two miles to the east. So that again presents both a challenge and an opportunity. So the, the challenge is there's not really a whole lot of food in the area. The opportunity is, is once we install food onto this property, we are going to be drawing in a lot of deer from the neighborhood. So again, that scenario or the scenario for this new property is a heavy cover scenario. The local neighborhood does not offer a whole lot when it comes to a food source. As you can see behind me, I'm standing in an open hardwoods. I mean, there might be some browse here or there, but there's, there's not a whole lot of browse. And outside of the, the month where the oaks are dropping the acorns, there is not a whole lot of food being offered in the area. So we have a huge opportunity here to give the deer a preferred fall food source. There's also gonna be a lot of different combinations of, of both cover and food in the local area. You just have to do your best to analyze the local habitat and try to figure out what your area is lacking that the deer need that you can provide on your property. And that's gonna make your property that much more attractive for the deer in the area. So again, if you're in an area with heavy ag, very little cover, try to provide as much cover on the property as possible. Or if you're in an area with a lot of cover, very little food like this property here, you know, try and like we are going to, to provide as much food as possible on the property. And I guess I should edit that statement a little bit. You know, you don't try to provide as much as possible because you know, we have 57 acres here. We're, we're not gonna be providing 57 acres of food, but we are gonna be providing more food on this property. You know, we're, we're in a heavy cover scenario than we, we did on our previous property. We, we were in a heavy ag scenario. So we wanna make sure that we're providing everything that a deer needs on our property to increase the chances that the deer wanna call our property home while at the same time placing an emphasis on what the deer are lacking in the local area. So again, for us on this new property, because we're located in an area with a lot of cover, and it doesn't matter what that cover is, it could be a swamp, it could be open hardwoods, you know, it's just an area that doesn't offer a whole lot of food for the local deer herd. Because we're in an area that does not offer a whole lot of food, you know, while we're designing our habitat plan, putting together our parcel layout, we need to make sure that we're carving out a lot of space for future food plots. So that is going to be the first thing that we're gonna be doing uh, with our habitat plan is finding locations for food plots. And determining the locations for the future food plots on this new property wasn't that difficult only because the food plots are placed in the only locations that we can actually install food plots. However, that's not the case with most properties. Most properties, you can put a food plot in a lot of different locations. However, before deciding on a location for a food plot, there are a few factors that you should be considering before installing food plots on your property. And to make sure that this video doesn't go too long, we'll talk about those factors in a separate video. But as far as where to start your habitat plan or where should you be placing an emphasis when designing your layout or working on those early habitat improvements, you really need to be analyzing the local habitat and try to figure out what is the area not providing the deer herd. And whatever that is, whatever the area is lacking, make sure that that is a top priority within your habitat plan, within your design. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video on how we like to start the habitat design process and how we started the design process for this property. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.